Hi, it's Rob here from Thermod Showers. Just going to explain to you what it is we do and uh, how our thermostatic shower can replace a two tap manual shower system, much like this arrangement here. So, basically, the old shower head comes off like that. Remove the existing tap spindles. You are left with that arrangement. The old outlet gets blocked off with a useful hanging nut arrangement which is chrome and it screws on. You can hang a loofer on there or something because that is now redundant. Then you are left with the two tap spacings of the bridge. Now you've got two choices. If the breech is fairly close to the tiles, much like this one here. You have this adapter that screws in. But the most important part of the whole installation is to push in these brass inserts into this arrangement here. And you'll need to put a bit of lubricant on that to push it in, because it is very stiff. And screw that in, and that seals off the breech the back but if these are set further back in the wall just to simulate just to simulate that the further back in the wall you then have these adapters and remember again to push that brass adapter into here that's the most important part of the whole installation if you don't press these inserts into these adapters the whole thing will not work and you screw that in with a box spanner and if you can't get a box spanner in you can even put some grips on the very end here and just tighten it up because you're going to be cutting that to length and once you've done that you then slide on that back plate and a compression olive and then this chrome nut with the two flat edges towards the tiles then you mark in there with a pencil and then cut to length with a standard pipe cutter and it cuts beautifully just a standard pipe cutter cut that to length it does cut very nicely. Just, uh, it's best to use this rather than a hacksaw. A hacksaw can leave it quite jagged, or um, it's just a more civilized way of, of cutting it. Just treat it as a piece of pipe, really. You won't be surprised. Don't forget, you only have to use these extension pieces if the bridge is set back in the wall. Quite a lot of time they are. But uh, I'm sure you guys will have a better pipe cutter than myself. And you can see that's cut really nicely. So then back with back plate and put on the olive but the most important bit here now is not to make that compression joint dry don't try and tighten that up now because you've got metal on metal and there's too much friction to compress on that olive so use a jointing compound or a thread lubricant Loctite or something like that just to take away the friction. And the way the best to do that is to put that on the male thread on this side. Push that on, on with the olive, smear a bit on the olive, and 
that's going to be a much smoother joint to actually make. And with the chrome nut, then you'll need two spanners. As you'll see, there are actually two fixing holes on that plate, but there's no real need to use those because sometimes it's a bit difficult to find an actual fixing point for those. So once you've got your jointed compound on, nice flat spanner, hold that in space, in place, and with your second spanner. Obviously, it's a lot different when you're actually in the bathroom. I'll be standing the other side, but it's just to show you how to do it. Then, you make your compression joint as such, and that's a nice smooth, taking away the friction. And then you've got your compression joint firmly done like that. And then you basically screw on the chrome domes, then put the actual shower valve on.